Yeah. One of the descriptions that I, I really enjoyed, and I think you may have come across this in your research too, uh, this differentiating between mindfulness and flow is that in mindfulness, it's as if we're sitting on the edge of the river, watching the stream of consciousness flow. Whereas in flow state, perhaps we're kind of diving into that river, kind of getting swept mm -hmm. away, engaged and gross. I'm not sure if that's a metaphor or analogy you've used too, or? Yeah, I, I personally haven't used that one, but I like it a lot because flow is a much more doing state. Again, like the um, kind of the ups of the, upsides of flow or sometimes the downsides of, of mindfulness and vice versa I kind of have, have um, thought about them as almost like a yin, yin and yang type of thing right and so with flow you are really focused on that thing that you're doing it's a much more doing state where you are executing on whatever the thing is that you thought that you wanted to be doing um, but you're also with flow you're blocking out distractions right which is often a very good thing when you're trying to focus on a singular task or whatever the task is at hand. But, you know, we're thinking about a workplace example. If you're a manager and you're in flow all day, every day, which, you know, we at FRC, we know that's not, you know, possible or, or you know, not something that we actually even want to really strive for. Um, but if you're in flow, a lot of the time as a manager, you're focused on like your individual tasks, right? And you're blocking out distractions, but as a manager, your job is often to pass information on to other people or to help other people to, you know, um, deal with their issues. And so, um, you know, mm -hmm. people might be emailing you. Sometimes people are knocking on your door or coming up to your desk and you just basically ignore them because you're blocking out distractions and distractions themselves can be a wide range of things, right? So um, what we kind of label as distractions in our mind could actually be detrimental to getting your, your job done as well or to um, helping others if you, uh, you know, if you don't pay attention to that. You mentioned how mindfulness could be used to manipulate unhappy employees into accepting their current situation and kind of becoming pacified in their place in the organization. Seems mm -hmm. like, yeah, the interesting nuance there to describe, you know, how mindfulness might have that detriment, but flow could maybe be an opposite or more ad adaptive mental state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So mindfulness can often be used as a band-aid for, you know, a, a, a deeper symptom that organizations have, right? So when we teach ourselves to be mindful, we sort of like let, you know, again, like help ourselves to, to be less stressed out, right? To control mm -hmm. our emotions a little bit better, to understand how we're feeling. But if the work situation that you're in is abusive or, you know, really not making you happy because of the type of work that you're doing or because of the amount of stress that that work itself causes you. And you're kind of using mindfulness as a crutch to um, get over those things, then, you know, that's not what we want to encourage in the workplace. We want to try to get at the, you know, the real um, underlying issues there. Uh, and so, you know, mindfulness can be used to, to kind of get people to forget, oh yeah, like actually these are deeper issues here, but just go meditate, relax and get over it and like keep doing your work kind of a thing. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Thank you.